Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today with you and to be part of this event, which I find very interesting. So today I'm going to talk about um, um, what I understand about sharing care by means of art, giving examples from my practice, from my experience as a curator. So uh, today I'm going to present you shortly um, DAFEST International Digital Art Festival in Sofia. Then I will talk briefly about the evaluation platform uh, that we uh, do together with my colleagues in DALAP Foundation. Yeah, I just forgot to tell you that I'm actually representing DALAP, which is a foundation based in Sofia, Bulgaria, which is part of the um, uh, Toolkit of Care collaborative project. So we are very like, fascinated to be one of the partners. So the first two projects are um, organized by DALAP. Then I will really switch to a totally different uh, perspective, showing you um, and telling you uh, about the um, Baba Residency, Grandma Residency, that is organized by um, Ideas Factory Association I work with as a curator. And finally, I will show you one other example of uh, art and care, which was part of a project called Ethica Labs, um, that I was also involved as curator. Okay, so very briefly, before to start my presentation on the project I just mentioned, to tell you um, about my background and experience. Um, shortly, I graduated, uh, after I graduated the National Academy of Art in Sofia, Art History Department, I was invited to join Interspace Media Arts Center in Sofia. Actually, Interspace was the first professional organization, I mean, more like artists run space, um, that started really working in that field in Bulgaria. So very soon we become really active. We had a lot of projects, most of them uh, international collaborative projects. So in a way, however, we were the only one on the Bulgarian scene. We are yet not very recognized there because most of our activities were abroad, not that much really um, showing um, in Bulgaria, and it was simply because of the lack of funding. At that time, it was really, really hard uh, moment. I mean, we didn't have state or municipal support, and most of the uh, support we received from European programs. Uh, so, in the meantime, it was around 2005 and six. I was. Uh, part of a project which was one of these projects we were uh, participating as a partners, uh, which was called On Different Second, and it was organized by uh, with the Bungische Kunstverein in Stuttgart. Sorry about my German, I speak no German at all. But um, it was a very interesting experience for me because at that project we were six curators from around the world. I mean, like South Korea, Brazil, Spain. Uh, Croatia and Bulgaria, and we were precisely uh, working on that uh, um, field of political and socially engaged art. So for me it was a new territory and I discovered it thanks to that and uh, that basically became then my main interest in my curatorial practice. Also, I attended at that time Berlin Biennial, which was uh, curated by um, Maurizio Catalan, very interesting edition of Mice and Men, it was called, but anyway, I will not talk more about me. So I switched to um, Digital Art Festival. We started organizing in Sofia. So I was part of Interspace team for 10 years. It was really my first job, very, really, um, important for me, but in a certain moment I felt like I need another uh, how to say, another um, challenges and another paths to, to take. So that's why I quit the job and I became a freelance curator. And shortly after that, I was invited by the National Academy of Art that recently opened up a master program of digital arts, 
which is still the only one in Bulgaria covering this field. And uh, because they knew about my experience with Interspace, they invited me to help them start organizing this festival, which they mean to be something really to, to present uh, to a broader audience what the digital and media arts are. Because however we've been working with Interspace for so many years, still on the Bulgarian scene, they, they keep on asking me questions, what digital arts are? So we need to work more eventually. And uh, I agree, and I become part of the team, and we start um, inviting a lot of international artists, but at the same time, we were presenting also young uh, artists from Bulgaria, and also established ones, but uh, especially for the, the, for the young uh, artists, it was very important, uh, um, and it was a great chance for them to, to be part of a big international event to make their debut on the, such a large scale uh, festival. And m most of all, of course, the contact with the other artists coming to Sofia presenting their art. So basically, the festival is, I will go briefly to the slides. Um, so we have, uh, it's five days. Uh, first editions were annual, then from 2011 we decided to make it biannual because it was really hard to do it every year. As it wasn't our main job, it was more like um, in between other things we're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, so we decided uh, this um, format of five days uh, program, uh, mostly with exhibitions. Uh, we have also performance program. We have a very uh, um, active ed educational program, being part of this institution of the um, uh, National Art Academy. Of course, uh, we organize lots of workshops, lectures for the students and for other young artists interested in the uh, topics. We also have screening program and, and parties, because, you know, I mean, parties are very important for socializing and networking. Um, so the first editions were mostly in the Art Academy. They have this beautiful gallery which we, you see here on the slide uh, with Kodak uh, participation. Um, and we also collaborated with some other uh, institutions. And somewhere maybe at the sixth edition we decided that this building um, it's not anymore really um, say good enough, uh, I mean, um, or big enough to, to present all the activities of the festival. So we decided to, to spread the festival program around the city of Sofia. And in the seventh edition, we collaborated with 12 other spaces, mostly galleries, but also some mm, like small theaters that are focused mostly on performing arts and dance, contemporary dance, some clubs, etc. So it really like expanded. It. Um, and you can see that we have really participation from all around the world. We had Stellark, we had also Vibeke from Singapore and many, many others. So on one hand, what we want to present is the, the um, important achievements and the new trends on the digital art scene, but at the same time also to, to give a space for the young people to, to be part of this festival. So they are participating in the educational program. I mentioned already that many young artists that are mostly our students or already graduated students, they, they present their artworks in the festival. And um, yeah, this is in a way really with the mission to create a community in, in Bulgaria that are interested or working in the field of digital and media arts. So our efforts are mostly focused on that and it works. It really works very well. We are having um, now the ninth edition, which will take part at the end of October. We always do this at the first uh, month when the academic year starts so that we can gather all the students. Um, 
and people are, I mean, the general audience knows about the festival, expecting it, and it truly really feels like we, we managed to, to create this uh, interest and um, engagement of the, of, the, uh, um, of the people about this. So, yeah, I already mentioned that besides these big stars that we uh, invite, but not only, of course, we also invite some artists that are interesting for us because we are following the big uh, uh, forums and festivals in the field, like uh, Ars Electronica, Transmediale, and many others that can give us um, this uh, really um, a picture of what is new on the, on the scene. But we also present these young people, so you can see on the slides. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and just to mention that uh, we work with lots of volunteers because uh, you can imagine, I mean, last time we had like 14 locations and more than 50 participants from all around the world. So we need a lot of volunteers. And many of the Art Academy students are actually volunteering. And for them, it's also a very good opportunity to see some really insights, um, what it means to do such a big international event. I mean, to, to have this really um, experience from the kitchen of the things. But also, this is a way to, to, to have a closer contact with the participants and to, to to get some new knowledge and experience and uh, some really nice um, friendships, but also artistic collaboration started from the festival that we knew about. Okay. Uh, so yeah, just to mention that after all these years, of course, uh, the festi uh, DAFEST is recognized about the Bradley Republic and we increase the visitors at the first editions there were around 1,000. Now there, there are like 3,000 people. Because it's just a one of a kind in, in Bulgaria. I mean, specialized only for this kind of arts. Of course, there are some other um, artistic events or exhibitions and festivals having this kind of installations or performances using media or digital uh, arts. But DAFES is the only one really showing this in Bulgaria. And we are partnering with many institutions that are helping us. Um, we, yeah. So, um, as I mentioned first, it was an initiative. I mean, DAFEST was uh, initiated and organized by the Academy of Art in Sofia. But within the years, we realized it's really difficult to, to keep this uh, organization in that way because you can imagine the academy is a very heavy bureaucratic structure and because we need to fundraise this event from outside. So all the money had to go through their uh, office and it was really like really difficult task. So eventually we decided to do our own foundation, which we called DALAP. <laughs> uh, on one hand, to, to continue organizing DAFEST in a way that we are provisioned to, to happen, but also to, to expand the activities in the field of digital arts in Bulgaria, making some regular uh, events, like workshops, exhibitions, but also to support this community we already created throughout the festival. So that's why our main activities are, first of all, that first, but also a platform which we call evaluation, uh, which we, with, by which we support young Bulgarian artists to produce a new work. We also have an uh, online dictionary and theoretical platform, and as I mentioned, we organize exhibitions, and this year we also start a residency program. So this is our team. We are three people. We are all uh, also part of the master art program teaching there. And even Vendelin Shurel, who is the chairman of the organization, is the head of the program. I mean, Vendelin and Antoni are media artists. I'm curator, as I mentioned. And my job in the uh, foundation is also coordinating the projects, because there must be one too. 
<laughs> to do this job, you know. Um, and Antoni is more like the lab ambassador because he is based in Austria, uh, teaching uh, in Salzburg Academy, and he travels a lot. I mean, he has a very active uh, practice as a media artist. So when he's traveling, he's also making this ambassador work. So very briefly about evaluation project uh, platform I mentioned already. Um, we, this is aimed to um, production, distribution, and dissemination of uh, projects by Bulgarian Munjik artists working in the field of digital arts. We select the projects through an open call for participation. Uh, based on that, we um, choose um, in the first year there were five, then there were less, but still, I mean, uh, it started in 2020. And we provide the artists a grant for the production, and also we are helping them with some advices and let's call it like a mentorship. I mean, really helping them to, to develop the idea that they propose to a finished art piece. And at the end of the process, which usually takes three to four months, we are making a solo exhibition of, uh, of the uh, produced projects, uh, just to, to, to focus really on the work that is done by the artists. And we figure out that for most of the participants in the exhibition, it's the first solo show. So it's really important for them to feel like, you know, having a solo show in established um, gallery in Sofia. Um, but it's not just in Sofia, basically, that we present the, the, the projects. Even the first edition, um, it was uh, primarily presented, uh, I mean, the five projects that we produce was uh, primarily presented in other cities in the country. I mean, those who have more active developed art scene, the biggest one, of course, like uh, Varna, Burgas, Plovdiv, and uh, Vidin. And um, so the solo shows were first there with the idea somehow to really um, decentralize the cultural life in Sofia. Because I don't know how it's in your countries, but in Bulgaria, most of the cultural activities and cultural life is really uh, in the capital. Just become, before to come here, I attended one panel in Sofia for another international event. And then um, one of the lecturers provided the statistics, a very new one, showing that 84% of the cultural activities are in Sofia. Just imagine what it means. So my effort, especially being a person who is not living in Sofia for more than seven years, and really seeing with my own eyes and knowing what it means to not have access to culture in the place you live. So that's why my efforts are really focused on that to, to, to try and uh, really um, present exhibitions and other art uh, events outside the capital. So that's why we decided to do it like this. It was very challenging because it was the year of the first year of the pandemic with the lockdowns and you know it was quite difficult but still we managed to to do this and what you see now is this uh, 3D animation by Marina Genova which is called Kunstart and on the other photo you can see uh, some of the visitors in, in the City Art Gallery in Varna, where we presented this. Next slide is about the project of Axinia Pecheva, A Tale of the End, which is a bio-art project um, in collaboration with some other like, um, specialists, like microbiologists and the physician, and uh, they were exploring um, like um, like trying to create like a dialogue between visual art, artificial intelligence, and microbiology with all these bacteria on a painting that you see on the, on the slides. And it was presented in Veliko Trenovo, 
in the Herz Toya Gallery, run by one very interesting artist uh, with uh, Norwegian origin, but based in the city. Then we had um, Vladislav Iliev project called Aura, uh, presented in Vidin City Art Gallery. Aura is a mapping project and it's um, investigating exactly how people are putting masks on their faces and of course inspired by this pandemic and all the masks that we need to wear but also um, how do people are putting masks just to, to um, um, somehow hide their emotions or yeah some other um, unattended uh, showings. And we had then one collective, Jana Melamet and Veronika Tabakova, who created this immersive interactive installation with some sensors. Um, and, uh, it was presented in Plovdiv, in one small gallery there. So you, you see the, the range of the, the, the projects, I mean, the variety of the artistic explorations and uh, and the topics they have chosen. Oh, yeah, one more we had in the first year. It was Sivelina Ivanova and Martin Lukanov. Top Dog is called. It's a, a game, a computer game. It was presented in a way of this old, um, um, how is that called? This kind of games. Mm. Arcade. Hmm? Arcade. Arcade. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Yeah, so that was the first edition. Then we, and for the first edition, we received a funding from the Ministry of Culture that at that year just opened up a new program which is called Visual Arts, and they provided funding for art organizations like ours. So, thanks to this support, we could, on our hand, support the young artists. And why this platform is so important? Because basically in Bulgaria, as I already mentioned, the funding opportunities are not very much. I mean, they're really limited. Mostly they go to established organizations. And for instance, the young artists that are just starting their career is so difficult to get support and to produce a project. And you know more maybe that especially this kind of art projects, I mean, dealing with uh, digital and media um, technologies are kind of expensive. I mean, they need uh, expensive equipment, they need some assistance from experts like uh, coding engineers or other um, uh, technological experts, and that all cost money. So that's why we decided that we will really be in help of these people getting a grant from the institutions and providing them another grant. And we make it in a very easy way. We just sign a contract, we give them the money, don't ask them for receipts, everything. That you know for those who are working that it's really important, I mean, just to, to take away this bureaucracy and paperwork and just to focus on the, on the production. Uh, for the second edition, we... Um, couldn't make it with the Ministry of Culture, but uh, we managed to get some support from City, uh, Sofia City Municipal Program. But it was much limited than the, the first year, that's why we make, could make it just two projects. One was of Pet Kotanchev, who is um, a digital artist and a set designer, and he created this Metascape project. And for him, for instance, it was the first show and he was very excited about the opportunity really to, to, to create um, his own personal art project because he usually work in collaborations with some other people. So just giving you an example what it means to be part of this uh, platform. Um, and the, the project he, he did um, in the framework of evaluation was this kind of like TV simu simulation that um, in a way interprets the social ecosystem of this new digital reality that he called the metaverse. Uh, that of course made this reference to the 
social networks that we all use. And the other artist in the second round was Michaela Lakova, who is a young Bulgarian artist uh, based in Netherlands. And for her, it was also really um, a great opportunity to, to produce a new project and to present it in Sofia because uh, um, it's not that easy, I mean, not being part of, uh, of Bulgarian scene to do this. And she created this. Um, um, installation with um, a hologram um, exploring um, in a way that uh, how the, the old mythology is now interpreted in a new mythology uh, I mean all this uh, God and um, um, religious ritual are in a way now uh, functioning in our new digital reality. Uh, and now we are in the third year of evaluation uh, and our uh, artists and collectives, because this year we have like two collectives and our, uh, one artist are working right now. And we are going to present their new projects uh, from mid-March to mid-April in the Bog Gallery in Sofia. And later on, we are going to present them again. I mean, there will be sole exhibitions of each of the projects. And all together, they will be uh, again presented within the ninth edition of the festival, which will be in October. OK, so it was about the evaluation. Just to show you uh, very briefly uh, about the, this um, platform which I mentioned at the beginning. Um, it's a project that my colleague Benelin Shurelov started with uh, his uh, students in the master program of digital arts in the Art Academy. And it uh, came out of the need to have one online resource uh, giving them information about some terms, artists, uh, but also uh, they also collect some um, uh, theoretical um, materials like uh, essays, books, papers, and this is all in Bulgarian. I mean that uh, people that are involved in this platform, they're mostly students or PhD um, students of the uh, program, they're making the translations and provide this uh, information in Bulgarian, which is kind of crucial, especially for the students to, to understand that in their own language. So it looks like this, it's Wikibase uh, 2. So we have uh, articles like this of certain artists or more like uh, theoretical uh, papers. And yes, so this is another, um, another project for supporting the community of really showing this care or implementing the care of, of those people to, to understand and to get more um, uh, knowledge, but also to be inspired to new ideas, etc. Okay, so that was the first part of my presentation that was mostly about the young artists living in the capital of Bulgaria. The next part, which is kind of controversial, is about artist residency, which we run together with my friends from Ideas Factory in small villages um, in, in different parts of the, um, um, uh, in the country. So basically, Ideas Factory uh, started this initiative in 2015 in four villages in Rodopi Mountain with the idea to, to connect young people from the city with the elderly people in the villages. Because you know that throughout the years this connection with, between the generations somehow really suffering in a way. You know that uh, many young people don't, don't have their own village that they go. For instance, I'm from this generation that my parents had their own parents living in the villages. So I remember how in the summer vacation, I spent my time in the village with my grandma and grandpa and my cousins. And it was really this 
lovely childhood uh, freely raised on you know on these um, places and that is not really happening anymore for some people probably it still works but many young people in Sofia they haven't been in villages they don't have their grandma and grandpa there so this connection is really cut so my friends from Ideas Factory decided to try to reconnect this I mean to 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 give the the chance for that yacht from the city to go and spend some time with the elderly people so what they do is um, at, at, at least for in the first years of the residency, they invited uh, through an open call some people from different uh, disciplines or um, background, and they go and live uh, with these um, local people in the villages. I mean, they really spend time together in order to, 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 to experience this village life. But not only, the main goal is to, to create this connection and to exchange and to share and to, to, to be close, you know. And this really works perfectly. I mean, they became very successful in this and many, many editions, they, they took place in different parts of the country and uh, they started some um some like uh, social enterpriseships uh, i mean like uh, for instance producing um an album of this uh, old uh, lady singing collective from a small village in rodopi mountain or selling some handmade uh, socks of of the grandma so the idea was to continue also this um um, care that they created uh, throughout the residency. But because I'm really close with uh, the people organizing this, I've been following it from the very beginning. So in a certain moment, they um, took my proposal to turn Babo residency into an artist residency. And in 2020, it became artist residency because in the past, there were some people from the art field, but not all they were really connected with uh, art and culture. And uh, we, we actually uh, put another aim that uh, we wanted to, uh, young artists from the city to experience what it means to be, uh, um, I mean, to, 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 to do a community. Uh, job, I mean, to, to start doing some community-inspired art projects as more like socially engaged practices, etc., because many of them haven't been aware or experienced in that way. And uh, the first residency took place in um, the village of Dilena, which is um, a very small village in the northwest part of the country, which I mentioned with some of you that I spoke already, that it's the, the, the poorest region, not just in Bulgaria, but in the whole European Union. And what it was because it used to be one region full of heavy industries that were started during the socialist time and after the changes, the political changes in the late 80s, when Bulgaria from socialist country become a democratic one and we had this very long and difficult transition period during which most of the factories and these big industries were closed and people became unemployed so they they, they had to migrate i mean they they most of them they went to abroad or they moved to another big uh, mostly sofia um, to 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 search for a good life so I'm just describing the picture to, 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 uh, to give you an idea of what it means for those people in those small villages that, I mean, they used to be like big villages, but nowadays they're really like 50 to 100 people living. They, they, they were be 
even some cases with less of that number of people. And most of them are old people, and most of them are alone living. So it means what they need is really like a human attention and um, someone to talk to. And what they miss most are their relatives, uh, because as I mentioned, they are not anymore living in the country or they live in the big city, so they, they are really missing this uh, contact with their relative, uh, the, the person to person contact, I mean. So that's why um, in the previous slide you probably saw the, um, uh, um, the, the topic, the theme of the first uh, residence was a radical imagination of the village. Um, because you wanted to ask or to in a way challenge the artist to think more radically, but not in that way, more like this activist way, but just to open up their minds and their uh, imagination and to think what this village would look like in the future, seeing what is it nowadays. And um, as you can see, um, so at that time, uh, because it was um, a project funded by the European Cultural Foundation in Amsterdam, so it was to be, uh, it was supposed to be international one. I mean, uh, we, we did an open call, so we selected, um, in the previous year, 2019, we selected um, five artists from European countries and the rest of the group, five artists of, from Bulgaria. But in the March, end of March, you know, that the pandemic just closed uh, everyone. Uh, so we initially it was planned for April and May. So we had to figure out how to do this project. So eventually in August, we decided to do it in a hybrid <laughs> format as we, um, we had to do many other projects at that moment which means the Bulgarian participants went to the village and spent the time with the local hosts and the rest of the people who couldn't travel, stay in their country and they were collaborating with the Bulgarian so they were creating a teams in order to, to, to do a project together. Um, and uh, just to mention one important uh, thing that um, during this artist residency we usually collaborate with uh, Citaliste, uh, which is um, this very specific Bulgarian format of something in between community center and artistic uh, cultural center. Uh, Citaliste is uh, this very authentic format that um, uh, started actually in the late um, 19th century, just shortly after our liberation from the Ottoman Empire, during our so-called Bulgarian Renaissance, Vazirazdane, which means that in all cities and even small villages across the country, the local people establish these centers in order to provide education and, I mean, together with the local schools, of course, but these are more like clubs of um, um, and different like workshops for arts, but also for presentation of, of arts. So uh, during the socialist time, they were also quite um, um, active. Um, and um, this is um, uh, actually the only facility that is still in the villages. Um, no matter that nowadays most of these chitalis are almost empty, I mean, nothing almost happened there, but uh, we want to, to reopen them again and to, to work there with, with the local people. And uh, yeah, so you can see some pictures from, from this Chitaliste. So during the residency, artists are exploring the local context, talking with the local people. They were asking about the folklore, some uh, authentic uh, rituals, or some local um, um, 
uh, history of the place, etc. So uh, the point is that they, they really try to get inside this community to, to search what their needs are, what their dreams are about, and doing their artistic work on site. And at the end of the stay, which at that time was three weeks, we do a community event to present the, um, uh, the outcome of the residency, but also to do this kind of, um, of a festival, you know, like uh, to, to celebrate all together with the local people. And for the villages we've been, it's really like a big thing because they haven't had such activity for many, many years. So it really creates this you know, uh, joy and uh, celebration all together. And for the uh, event in Delena, we um, managed to open the local school that was closed and abounded for more than uh, 20 years. So, um, we, we find it as a very good setting for our exhibitions and uh, screenings, but also um, for the people it was a very special moment because most of them been there as a pupils, you know, and for so many years the, the school was closed and so they uh, decided, for instance, to make like a recreate, to, a performance and acting, uh, a normal uh, class uh, um, in, in the time that they were pupils. So, yeah, there were many, many activities. Uh, there were, as you see, some exhibitions. Uh, many of them were like photos that they've done during the residency. Um, there were some sport activities. Also, we always organized this um, buffet with some local cuisine prepared by our hosts from the village. And what is, as you can see from the picture, the most important is here, really this um, close contact and this really close sharing and uh, care that uh, we have from both young and old people. Okay, some very briefly some examples because I see the time is running. So just to, to mention this project which um, was made by Sara, uh, who is um, American and Elena. So they um, ask uh, the, the women in the Elena village to open up their wardrobes and to show them their handmade uh, clothes or other textile that uh, they do in um, in their village and for them it was really something very uh, special because it's kind of a treasure for them that they keep clothes in the wardrobes and nobody asks for this anymore. So open it up and show it to the people and then we show it in the exhibition it was really like, um, yeah, mm, something very, very special for them. Yes, very briefly, some more examples of that exhibition. Elena, who is a local Bulgarian artist, uh, uh, created this mural with some people from the city, uh, from the village, uh, in a very interesting composition, more in this cartoon style, and they love it. It's on the wall of the um, how is this called municipi in the in the city. So the next residency was in Salaj village, again in northwest region. Um, and this time we had this um, topic more related with the climate changes because it was funded by uh, one program. Um, we work together with uh, one foundation which is called Bulgarian Biodiversity Organization. So that's why we pointed out on the climate change and how this affects, I mean, how the global climate changes are affecting the local um, situation in these small villages because it's already a fact. I mean, many people are suffering from um, a lack of water in the, in the places. 
I mean, the water resources are very, very um, decreasing. So the, the food they, they used to uh, produce is not uh, anymore possible to, to be done. And for them it's a very big issue because those people are very poor. I mean, the, the pensions they receive are so minimal, so it's hard to survive just with them. So they are really making their own food in the, the garden in front of their houses. So that was the main topic of this second residency. And the invited artists are asked to, to search on that. So that's why you see they do, because they always do some volunteer work during the stay. And this time it was more related with agriculture in the village. And at the end we had again this community event. We didn't have exhibition at that time, but later on we, we had one in Sofia with this installation that the team of the residents created. Um, and it was very interesting, again, like immersive uh, installation, very tactile experience. People go through different rooms like a labyrinth uh, and they see some pictures and audio and video uh, recorded during the, the stay in the village. And it was all about the memories and how you actually, can, what you memorize, what you keep as a souvenir from places you've been to. Okay, uh, the last one, uh, it was in Gorno Pestone in Vratsa region, again in this northwest part of the uh, uh, country. At that time the topic was uh, uh, water and bread. Again, we continued this uh, ecological uh, line, but this time we wanted to ask more in an existential way what it's the um, what is the most essential today? Because in the past, you know that bread and water were really like the essentials. And we asked the young artists to, to search for answers, what is the essential today during their stay in the village? So, as you can see, they actually um, explore this ritual, which is, um, they receive from the um, I mean, from the locals, some stories, very interesting uh, uh, stories about the rituals they used to practice for praying of rain, for rain, which is called Germanus. And uh, so one of the projects they've done during the stay was precisely inspired by this. So at the end, we again had this uh, final uh, community event with exhibition and uh, okay and uh, this time the exhibition took place in one um, building which is which used to be the the local hospital to say I mean this this is um, not, not really a hospital hospital but that was the the, the place where the doctors see their patients but also, precisely in this um, room where you can see now the, the slide, it was the, 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 the room for the women to, to give birth. So for those old ladies, it was like, wow. And it was again closed because there is no more this kind of services, health services in the villages. So for them, it was really emotional experience. I, I used to be born here, so it was really like to get back to a place they somehow belong, which was closed for so many years, and to to experience it in a way that we proposed them by, by these exhibitions that were inspired uh, during the stay. I don't have any more time to, to explain you in details about the projects. I'd love to, but yeah, I'm afraid that I'm running out of the time. But they're all, in a way, related with the stay of the artists, I can see. I mean, either with the cuisine they, they've tried and wanted to, to, to document it and to make it as a recite book, or this is the Germanus ritual that I told you about, because um, um, originally, in the past, they, uh, the people do this kind of like uh, dough by uh, um, um, of clay, 
and they sing some songs. And this, you can see, I mean, the old lady is explaining to the kids what the ritual is about. So he also had this um, uh, event on the main uh, square of the village, one of the residents playing songs that were written with text by a local poet, uh, and he created the music. So all these kind of different, you know, uh, type of projects and interventions that are referring to the topics we, we put. And now, this year, we will have a really like a massive <laughs> uh, edition of, of the um, Baba Residency. We will go to six villages in the northwest of Bulgaria. And this is something I mentioned yesterday during this discussion, because we figure out that uh, when we've been to one place and we create this really unusual uh, for them, um, 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 how to say, situation. I mean, uh, that young people are in the village, uh, uh, really paying attention to the old people, asking them some questions related with their past and the place. At the end, we made this festival, and I mean, it's been like a joy and, uh, and yeah, enlightenment for all the locals for during this residency. At the end, they always ask us, "When you're coming back?" And we were like, oh, I don't know. However, most of the residents are coming back on their own expenses. They already created these very close relationships with the host. So they come and visit them. They go and uh, visit them on their birthdays or some other like family occasions. They're already part of their families, which is really amazing. So that's why in this year we are getting back to all these uh, villages we've been. And they're expecting us to, to be back and to, to really to be again working together and collaborate on the projects. Okay, uh, just one more minute to, to just to give you another example more related with technology because as you see, grandma was not so much um, into digital things, but um, I was curator of this uh, project which was called Ethica Labs. It's a regional project of Goethe Institutes in Southeast Europe. Um, and um, it was focused on exploration and research uh, on um, AI and ethics, or how the algorithms are um, changing our lives. And we research and discuss this from the ethical perspective. So basically, we did an open call and invited um, young specialists uh, from three different fields, art and culture, uh, IT sector, and humanity. So they work together in a team and explore a certain topic. And on the second round, so I uh, actually gave a present to Yanis and Helene of one publication we've done. Uh, after uh, the first edition. I mean, you can find the website and we have the, all the materials. But just to, to finish with this uh, example of one application that a team of uh, three um, young uh, ladies created during Ketika Labs second, is called Glueboat. And it's an um, application that is supposed to help people suffering from um, diabetes. So basically, they can uh, track in real time their blood pressure, their um, you know the, the blood sugar uh, levels, etc. In a way that um, they wanted to, to to present that it could be also um, not uh, helpful for for people in, in need. So it's just another example of a care that they wanted to finish with. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.